Thanks, Anthony. Um, I guess um, I consider lithium plus to be a very simple story. Um, it's all about high impact exploration. Um, so, so, okay, where are we? We are focused in the bino lithium field, which is a very short drive for Darwin. We're literally 45, 50 k's from the Darwin CBD. And what we have picked up is a very strategic land package. Um, we're immediately adjacent to a well-known Australian lithium miner called Lithium. Um, when when um, Core had a market cap of $20 million, Lithium Plus secured these tenements. So at that time, this area was unknown, Core was unknown. We got some fantastic tenements in a very strategic Lithium field, and we're now in the process of exploring them aggressively. Uh, fast forward a few years later, uh, Core Lithium has got a market cap of $1.6 billion and have just commenced production. Um, in terms of our share structure, I'd say it's very, very tight. 48% of shares are scrowed for another 18 months. We've got a 9% shareholder in the form of cattle, a very large, or CATL, a very large Chinese battery, battery manufacturer. Uh, in fact, they're a tier one battery manufacturer in the world. We've got a very modest market capitalization. We are higher than our IPO price, but well down from our highs. I think the reason for that in recent times is that where we operate in Darwin or near Darwin, there's currently the wet season, which has meant there's been no drilling for the last two to three months. That will change when the wet season ends in about a month from now, and we expect to have a very, very active drilling program for the balance of this calendar year. Um, so, as I said, very close to Darwin, that brings with it a huge amount of infrastructure, obviously proximity to port, power and road. Um, I mentioned that we surround core lithium. Yes, there is ne neurology here. Um, our, our projects are depicted in brown and red. Core's mining lease is depicted here in blue. Um, last year we drilled two locations and we hit mineralised um, lithium pegmatite in both places. So we made discoveries in the two locations we drilled and I expect that we will um, make further discoveries as we explore this tenement package. Um, this is just a simple cross-section. I won't labour the exploration details here, but in summary, what we find on our tenements is consistent with what Core has accounted adjacent or next door. Um, essentially, it's thick, high-grade pegmatite. So some examples on our side here from our lay discovery, 43 metres at 1.4% lithium, another one 28 metres at 1.5. Essentially, the first 50 metres is, um, is weathered and not mineralised, but once you get below that, you get into mineralised um, lithium pegmatites. So it's extremely exciting. Um, these systems are open at depth. And what we're seeing here is a series of repetitions. Uh, this, is, this is a plan view of the lay discovery. Um, essentially, what we'll do once we can get back onto the ground at the end of April, we'll drill this out into what I hope will be a maiden jork resource. And, um, um, and, and I think what we'll also find, hopefully anyway, is a series of repetitions. So just on this map here, We've um, intercepted another mineralised dike 160 metres to the east. Um, we've only just put one hole into that, but I hope that that will be a repeat of the one we've been focusing on uh, for, the, for the for last year. So it's very, very exciting. Um, there's going to be lots of news flow once we get back onto the ground. Now, I did mention Core Lithium, our neighbour. Um, just some background here. They've got a series of small deposits, five of them, which in aggregate total 18 million tonnes, grading 1.3%. Um, they've done the hard work and cracked the geological code. Um, essentially what we have here in this, this um, uh, the bino lithium field is weathered non-mineralised pegmatites at surface. Um, once you get below 50 metres uh, through the weathered zone, you get into the mineralised zone. And that's what CORE encountered on their side of the boundary and exactly what we've encountered with the drilling we've done on our side of the boundary. Um, OK, 
Okay, so look, all of the you know, early stage exploration has been done in the form of soil sampling and ground penetrating radar. What that has meant is that when we do get on the ground at the end of April, is that we'll have a very active drilling campaign. So we're essentially planning at this stage to have two rigs operating continuously, um, one RC, one diamond, to, um, to really accelerate the exploration on these properties. Um, I mentioned the outcropping of lithium. It does actually make it relatively straightforward to identify these deposits. You can see in the bottom image um, that white rock is the, is the pegmatites. Um, it comes to surface um, many, many locations throughout Core's property and our property. Um, the issue here is to step back and drill underneath that into the fresh rock. So we've done that twice last year and on both occasions we hit very good grades at depth and we'll continue that same formula um, throughout the course of this coming year. Um, we also do seek to overlay other exploration techniques, um, the example here being the ground penetrating radar, you know, where we see correlation between the ground pen penetrating radar uh, often correlates to the weathered pegmatitis surface. Um, okay. There's probably some slides I can slip here, but look in summary, um, we've just planned our four 12-month program, two rigs drilling continuously. Our strategy is to, on the back of that drilling, publish a maiden mineral resource or jork resource by the end of this calendar year, Q4 of this year. And I like to think, certainly hope, that the proximity this site has to infrastructure, being obviously power, port and road, uh, workers' accommodation, etc., means that this is likely to be low-cost mine development. That obviously depends on the amount of tonnes we find and the depth of those tonnes, but all of the ingredients we would look for in terms of location have been satisfied. Um, and also importantly, the ground we're drilling is freehold, um, and that makes it a, very, well, a far more simple pathway to permitting than it does um, with other land tenures. So look, it's very, very exciting. Um, just a few words on our largest shareholder, CATL from China. Um, I do consider it, consider it a very important strategic relationship. They've got 9% of the equity. It's clear their motivation is to secure offtake. We've not given any arrangements away at this stage. But with other companies, they provide a significant links of capital in return for offtake type arrangements. So we think they're a good partner. Our chairman has a close and long-standing relationship with their chairman. And I think that um, you know, partnering with a tier one global leader, a company that's responsible for a third of all batteries manufactured, is um, a great relationship for a small company like ours to, to, to leverage from. Um, in terms of border management, um, I will just highlight our chairman, Dr. Bin Guo, he's a geologist. I consider him to be one of the gurus of lithium globally. He's had a phenomenal track record over 10 years, um, dedicated in his life really to, to minerals all around the world and in particular lithium. So um, he's the founder, he's the largest shareholder and, um, and really the brains behind the exploration program that we're putting in place. My background's commercial, I'm a former banker the last 10 years or so, I've been focused on a renewable energy business, Genix Power. Um, these days, I'm a non-executive director of that business. Um, look, I won't dwell too much on why I'm excited about lithium, and the same could be said for copper. I think Todd spoke very well about forward-facing metals just earlier, but clearly, we think the world is decarbonising. There's a huge opportunity for, um, for companies to find quality deposits and hopefully benefit from a very strong tailwind in terms of a rising commodity price. Of course, there is going to be bumps along the way. It won't be a, a linear um, price chart, but I do think structurally we've got a very good thematic in terms of um, a good outlook for, for our space in terms of lithium. So look, in summary, I guess there's six things I'd encourage you to remember about Lithium Plus. Uh, firstly, it's location. I think that's key. We're 45 or 50 kilometres from a significant city with good infrastructure, including port. We've got fantastic geological prospectivity. That's been proven by our neighbour, and everything we've done on our tenements 
has proven that our land package is consistent geologically with, with our neighbour. Uh, we're going to be super active drilling this year. Um, you know, once the wet season lifts, we'll be on the ground. Drill results drive, drive you know, share prices in companies like ours. And we're going to have a lot of news, I think, come to the market through this year. Um, point number four, strong relationship with the, the, the leading tier one battery manufacturer. Sets the company well to commercialise any discovery. And I'd like to think we've got a proven board and management team that can execute on the strategy to deliver these tenements into mine production. So for that, thank you very much.